the Midnight OJ podcast. You need to be louder, like like a like a Hulk Hogan. Brother! There you go, like that. There you go. MidnightOJ.com. How can we turn off Joey's mic? There you go. That won't kill, right? Go time. Oh, that's fake. Excuse me. back everybody to the midnight oj podcast we are joined today hold the applause by none other this man needs no introduction my brother from a cuban mother <laughs> <laughs> wow mario b gonzalez mario wow. gonzalez from salsa fever on two welcome my brother welcome you can see mario up, gonzalez on univision 4-1. <laughs> wow what's up mi gente uh first and foremost uh thank you Omar and uh, Joey for allowing me to be here and uh, big shout out to everybody listening in Matt props and uh, much success and uh, congrats on this thank you thank you phenomenal thank you, up and coming podcast that you guys are putting together thank you thank you I appreciate that listeners now in Canada and Switzerland that's what's up that's <laughs> right we will right now we will right <laughs> nice. hey, it's international Indeed. it's international that's what it's all about making sure we reach we reach the outer rims that's right. <laughs> even if it's just one shoulder at a t- one show yeah, at a time right. uh speaking of uh the other side of the planet we also joined today by our by our very own uh What's up, guys u.s marine corps <laughs> corporal <laughs> that's right yeah. represent yeah. U.S. <laughs> edgar <laughs> hernandez mr edgar hernandez that's right uh this is actually edgar's second show yes. second episode and uh, Second appearance. we figured we'd bring him in and uh, joined by uh, by Mario B. Also, we are all very good friends from back in the day. Yeah, man. Uh, coming through Hoboken, New Jersey. Represent. Uh, soon to be Venice, Hoboken, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> well, every morning I wake up and suddenly there's a there's a uh, there's another Honda Pilot on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, <it> is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want me to pick up the mic for you? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he's a good pick. Something else up. <laughs> I know it's gonna be the mic. But. I'm gonna help you out. No, we're good. We're good. You he's alright. Yeah, yeah, I think he's a little low. I think he can handle. You want it in front of you? Uh, let's. So see. B. There you go. You got yeah, it. Got it. There you go. All right. Some, some technical difficulties, yeah. but that's what happens when you go live. Yeah. Uh, uh, live. Talk to you. Get a microphone. Live. You get a microphone. Mm-hmm. You get a microphone. I'm the Oprah of this shit, man. <laughs> 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 you like that? Uh, okay. <laughs> I see Edgar's my number one fan, even though I'm his number one. <laughs> I like it. That's why I came back for a second round. Um, so talk to us a little bit about Salsa Fever on 2. Any events, anything you got going on, feel free to plug it. This is that moment before we get into the nitty gritty of the business. Yeah, man. Uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, Salsa Fever on 2 was a, a dream of mine uh, that I had uh, back in the uh, late 90s when I first started taking Salsa classes. Uh, and I took them as just a, uh, you know, a therapeutic option, right? Just uh, having Cuban parents, mm-hmm. Puerto Rican parents. My dad was Cuban. My mom was Puerto Rican. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just felt like, you know, that living room style needed an upgrade. Yes, it did. And uh, a friend of mine, Danny Usechi, if you're listening, uh, shout out to you, uh, <laughs> took me out to a club. Uh, called Club Paradise back in uh, Sayville. It was right across the street from nice. the club. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Back in the days. Yeah. And uh, that's where I, uh, I saw this uh, this new style called Dancing on Two, and um, mm-hmm. I just fell in love with it. And I, and I felt that uh, with the uh, Marine Corps background and the structure and the uh, the discipline, uh, I, I thought that um, from all this experience that I had with other instructors, that someone needs to take this to another level where there's a better curriculum, there's more structure. Uh, but still have that at home yeah, living room feel, which that that same flavor, that that old school, you know, feeling, uh, without losing the authenticity of, of the dance. And I created Salsa Fever on two, and uh, I've been doing this uh, 19 years now. Wow! And um, you know, I I love what I do. Uh, I used to work as a desktop publisher in Hoboken. <laughs> for many years. Uh, and, I remember and that. You know, yeah. I remember and that. Everybody first out street. there listening, yeah. Desktop uh, publisher. I like the title. <laughs> when, yeah. when, when did, when did you title? <laughs> title? When did you decide to open I up your own books. academy? 
Uh, I started out, if you remember, uh, Planet Hoboken. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Right across the oh, yeah, yeah. Remember that? Remember the good Spent old days? Spent many, wow. many, uh, yeah. many yeah. evenings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right by River Street. Uh, Formerly Schaefer's Diner. Wow. Yeah. Thank you yeah, back man. there. Take you back for a minute. Wow. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. what we do here at MidnightOJ.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was right across here from the path. Uh, yep. It was the go-to spot. Mm -hmm. And uh, yep. they were having their first Latin night. And uh, I started dancing there. And uh, they asked if I wanted to start teaching there. Oh no! They're, shit. they're once a week Latin night, and uh, I did, and the just, just the um, the request started building and building, and uh, I said, "All right, if there's an audience, if you build it, they will come. They will come." Right? <laughs> now you you were just how, how long did it take? Oh man, a couple of weeks, and uh, it started with uh, a. And you were just that good. I wouldn't say it was that good. I guess the product was that good. He was definitely you know? that motivated. I mean, yeah. that's, that's really what it takes. No, but I mean, for, so, for someone to ask him to start teaching. Well, let, let's like if I go and take classes for two weeks, no one's going to come up to me and say, hey, Joe, can you well, teach me how to dance salsa? Let's, let's, it depends on what you're teaching, though. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I can teach you Croatian dance. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks. You're, teach you yeah. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> well, let, let's be fair, right? right let's, um, let's, at, yeah. at, back in 98, there were no Latin clubs in Hoboken. They weren't. No, there was just Latin nights. Right, right. Latin that's nights. Right. Yeah. So Thurs this was Thursdays, first, maybe. Right, uh -huh. right. Where there was like, uh, you know, freestyle, there was club, there was a little bit of old school hip hop and maybe two salsa songs and then that was it for the <laughs> night. And then they were allowed to call it Latin night. Because, right, right. Right. <laughs> to draw in, and it's marketing, right? It's great marketing. It's beautiful But marketing. this was the first Latin night where it was just 100% Latin music, salsa, meringue, bachata. And uh, so to be to fair, buy. yeah, so to be fair, it, it was a great um, opportunity for me uh, to pave the way to open up, uh, you know, just salsa where there wasn't in Hoboken. And, and there's so much, uh, well, I can't speak for now, but there were so much Hispanics back in Hoboken uh, where, you know, I think that audience was requesting it, and, you know, if you have it. So from there, I went to the boys club. Yeah, remember the boys I club? remember, yeah, you were right next to And uh, I was teaching one day a week at the boys club. I was renting out space, nice. and that was getting crowded. So I said two nights a week. That was getting crowded, and I tried it three nights a week. Talk about a snowball effect. Ladies. Yeah, man, it was a beautiful <laughs> thing. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't go to school for business. I didn't know what was happening. All I knew was... There was people, something there. Yeah, yeah, people wanted something, and they kept coming back for it. Um, and It's a beautiful with, thing, isn't it's it? It's a beautiful thing because, you know... Working nine to five, day in day out, uh, I was getting great money. It, it was great money. I loved my boss. I loved what I did. Mm -hmm. um, but my passion, my true heart, I found it with salsa. You know, you, you get to open up with so many diversity, so many, so much uh, uh, ethnicities, mm -hmm. uh, and hearing everyone's story. Because at, at at first, people come in, it's like, oh, it's a salsa class, but you don't realize what's happening behind the scenes. A lot mm -hmm. of people go there for, you know, for cardio, for weight loss. A right. lot of people yep. go there to build social skills. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go to my academy to make to, friends. Yeah, make friends. <laughs> you draw a crowd. Yeah. I'll say that. Yeah. I, I've been out to one of your one of your events uh, yeah, on a weekly, man. and uh, let me tell you, you, you draw a crowd, yeah. man. Uh, we <laughs> gotta hit that up again. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Do. <laughs> absolutely. So at the end of the day, it's more therapeutic, right? Because a lot of people use it as an outlet, either to forget about their job, mm -hmm. forget about stress, find their soulmate. Whatever it is, yes, it starts with the word salsa, but at the end of the day, there's a different outlet that people take advantage of. And like you said, you know, my socials happen every fourth Sunday, I'm sorry, fourth Saturday of the month, um, and the next one's on the 25th of this month, and more information, you go to my website, salsafeveron2.com, uh, and again, no judgment. I mean, we, we cater to everybody. Uh, it's from uh, 8 p.m. to 2 in the morning. It's only $5. All the drinks are included. Um, you know, the, the so Mario B juice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have, this, you know, we have you the B punch. Yes. You, could, you, could either, you could either go to Mario B or you could go down to uh, the bodega here, Union City, because that's where I learned salsa <laughs> dancing. All right, ready? Oh, and people, 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 and people
first of all, if you're tuning in, we are Facebooking oh this live. God. Live. Go to Facebook. Check us out. Go to Mario B. Just having page. fun. Mario yeah, B. Man. Gonzalez. I don't know how to look you up on Facebook. I'm new to this stuff. So. Well, yeah. you know, everybody knows me uh, back in the days, Mario B. Uh, and everybody always asks me, but your last name is Gonzalez. How in the hell do you have a B? Uh, basically, it all started back in the days, um, you know, growing up, uh, being born in the 70s. If you remember, the lingo back then was oh, B. Forget what it. up, B? What up, B? What's going on, B? What's up, B? You hungry, B? Yo, let me hit that B. You know what I'm you know? So, you know, it was Mario B. And yeah. back in the days, B boys were strong, right? Yeah. We had, you know, we had break dancers and we had a lot of taggers. Uh, it was the greatest, man. It was yeah. the greatest. It was the greatest. Not the event, but it was the greatest era for Please. music. Oh, it's what made us now. The Palladium. We used to go to Palladium. Oh, all the time. we've had that conversation. Stories. I know we're diverting from the. No, no, no. Stay. But, uh, you, can, you can talk about whatever you want. This is great times, man. And just being here with you guys again, it brings back so many memories. I know we're missing a couple of cats from the crew. Yeah. Um, but just oh no here. well they'll come along don't yeah. worry yeah. They'll, they'll, the strays always return yeah, back man. to the we're the working song. on it <laughs> yeah uh but again you know th this is what i do now for a living um you know i have an academy located up in the jersey city heights 83 franklin street jersey city new jersey come and check me out uh, we're open seven days a week we have classes for kids we have classes for adults we have beginner all the way to advanced level and even if you want to take your dance to the next level we have performance programs as well if you really want to build up that self-esteem and that courage. So uh, we have a little bit of uh, everything to offer. And our prices are the most affordable in the tri-state area. So you're definitely getting your money's worth. Your guys. bang for your buck. And don't Absolutely. forget about that. For first Saturday of every month, is it? Fourth, Fourth Saturday, Saturday of every month. Of every month. I already fucked one, up. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I'm going to the next Listen, one, I think. Uh, Omar, watch your fucking mouth. All right? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Listen. My bad, my March, bad, my bad. March 25th, 9 p.m., 2 in the morning. Come check us out if you guys want to join us. Mention Midnight with OJ and you'll get in for free. Oh, wow. That's our first cross, there we go. cross oh, promotion. Oh, I like to hear, baby. Guys, cross mention, promotion. What we're going to do is mention Midnight <sighs> Here we go. OJ. That's and you it. Get him for free. That's guys. it. And now, oh, man. That's it. That's you from Westchester. Where is my That's it. That's it, baby. That's Blow it. up. That's what's up. Uh, <laughs> I like some midnight OJ, baby. We, we definitely appreciate <laughs> the cross promotion. Oh, I'm man. curious. I'm going to go just to count to see how many people get <laughs> in. Come on, man. Come on. Just to stand at the well, door and be like, you get in for free. Absolutely. You get in for free. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, like like I said, I, I definitely want to help boost the show. I think the show has a lot of potential. Um, and I definitely want to be a part of, of getting a lot more artists for you guys. I have a lot of connections, as, as most of you know. Uh, and I've been blessed and grateful to have these connections. And, you know, you guys have seen me transition and blossom. Uh, well, definitely you know, God has put you in our yeah. path, you know, Absolutely. for a reason. Uh, yeah, everything happens for a reason, like we were discussing <laughs> earlier. And uh, I think, uh, you know, eternity... Uh, doesn't have to think what we think it is all the time. You know, things happen naturally, and they happen naturally for a reason. And uh, I think uh, God put us in a, in a certain place uh, to create this magic that's happening today. The whole group, man. The, yeah, all, man. all my friends. I mean, I, I really got lucky. I got really yeah, absolutely, lucky. Absolutely. <laughs> is that what you call Seriously? it? Lucky? Yeah. lucky? Yes, yes. Absolutely. I'm blessed. Like yeah. he said, we're blessed. Definitely blessed, man. There was, what? There was like 10, 12 of us. I mean, the whole Many blessings. Like, yeah, Many blessings and, yeah. and moving plural, forward, plural, man. Plural. Um, but most people don't know or may not know because you, you travel the world. You, you're a very social individual. You're emceeing for the Salsa, for the New York International Salsa Congress. Check him out. I think there's an event coming up. I think Labor Day weekend in Stanford. In New York. I'm sorry, New yeah. York. Sorry Stanford's about that. Stanford's in Connecticut. Stanford's Connecticut, yeah, right. I'm sorry, I apologize. You, I that's all right, you got this. Right. You know, don't worry. My job's real easy today. I'm phoning it in. I'm phoning it in today, folks. I'm phoning it have, in. I want to ask you, have you ever had an embarrassing moment or, or stage fright or have seen it oh, that's with a good other question. people? I mean, Mario's oh, predominantly used to be a shy guy when we first right? met yeah, him. Yeah, so yeah, that, yeah. To, he, to see him blossom into this into this social phenomenon, I mean, I, I feel this is, we've witnessed history, man. It's a beautiful <laughs> flower now. Yeah, uh, so have you ever seen that? And that's why I'm blessed to, to be around you guys because, you know, you have a very few amount of people. I mean, we have a lot of friends, so mm -hmm. we call, right? right. But yeah, right. they're really acquaintances and you guys are really friends. You guys have seen me blossom from day one. And you guys remember from high school, 
Oh uh, my back, god! Back in '91, how shy I was. I was <laughs> moping my head down to my knees. Get you out, man! I, I, rem- I remember you being shy back in Collabo School in the '80s. Oh man, we go oh, back. '84, '83, '84, man. Big shout out to everybody who went to Collabo uh, wow. Middle School. If you guys remember that. Uh, over on Park Avenue, I remember. I, re- I remember one incident. We were at the gym, and uh, Mr. Miller. Oh gym man, teacher, my gym teacher. Man, I was wearing a hat, and he comes up to me. He's like, "You have to take that off." So I saw you, and I'm like, "But Mario has the hat on." Wait a minute, Mario! <laughs> How dare you! Am I throwing you under the bus? Yeah, <laughs> 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 That's a friend right there, man. Yeah. So, have you ever seen like any embarrassing moments or or uh, stage fright? You had to see stage fright, um, or yourself, even yourself. You know, I, ironically, uh, what what helped the shyness was the fact that I had a very successful baseball career, uh, mm-hmm. sports uh, career in high school. You were scouted up to a certain. I was point, scouted. Yeah, that's right. I uh, had many colleges looking at me. I was that's how, that's why I Cubs. think I became your friend because I figured, all right, this is the guy. <laughs> this guy oh, listen, listen, listen. I'm a young Dominican impressionable individual. I was like, this guy knows baseball. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oye, pero que what happened? Que la vaina, oh, oh, pero bueno, chico. What happened? Um, but yeah, man, uh, I was scouted by the Cubs. Um, uh, unfortunately, things didn't work out. I, I was injured and then I uh, came back and I tried out for the uh, Tampa Bay Devil Rays and uh, uh, the Colorado Rockies nice. before they became expansion teams because back then they didn't exist yet. So they were right. creating a forum system. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't make it. Uh, they they liked my bat, they liked my arm, but unfortunately, I wasn't fast enough to, you know, to their you know credentials and what they were looking for. You knew you knew too much English. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't I didn't have an accent, unfortunately. Yeah, um, I had papers, and I'm like, I'm sorry, but we can't take it. Yeah, you know, now that uh, it's Trump, better if yeah, you didn't. Yeah, now that Trump is in, maybe you know things are different, but um, <laughs> but I had papers, I you know. Um, but, but, paper, bro. Yeah, and then from there a crazy story from there uh i was very depressed you know i don't know if you guys remember not again to divert stories i was going through no, a lot by all means. let's give us first, give us the background yeah my first girlfriend ever mm. and uh i was going through some uh big changes some tough big times changes, tough yeah. times and i remember we went to colgate downtown jersey city where, shout out shout yeah. out once again it rears uh, its ugly head yes. <laughs> and uh most of you now know it as the financial district right yeah. right right the extended financial yeah, district who would know that but it was just slums it was just dirt and rocks it was a, a sinking pier it. It we determined slums. we determined it was a sinking pier in Jer- downtown jersey city and that's what we liked about it yeah it, eventually it would go away and people would go there to drink smoke weed uh or smoke anything <laughs> yeah 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 just uh, whatever, you know smoke whatever you want. Edit that part <laughs> yeah. whatever was uh whatever was out there yeah I, i'm not saying i did it i'm just right. saying <laughs> that's what i said people would go out there right yeah uh, and also everybody was booming their systems in the trunks mm-hmm. so everybody was big bo- and wu-tang yeah hot uh, box in their car and yeah. everybody was painting wu-tang symbols on the concrete <laughs> right so Taking pictures with Timberlands right. and the Tommy gear, right? Tommy. What you know about the Tommy gear, yeah. right? And uh, it was just good times. And I remember I was going through a lot of stuff. And uh, we were with Danilo and his, you know, his the, the, the Ford his, Mustang, his yeah. dropped Mustang, oh. the white one. Yes, yes. it wasn't like intentionally dropped. <laughs> yeah, it was just dropped because he was going through a lot of things. And it, it was carrying sixteen yeah, of us, which is why it was dropped, right? And uh, I remember uh, going out with Fred, and and you know I'll never ask Freddie for his advice again. But, <laughs> uh, so Freddie, man, look, listen, I'm, I'm not feeling too good. You know, I want to forget about what I'm going through and help me out. What am I going to drink? You know, I wasn't a drinker, and he's like, you got to drink Cisco. So the first thing I went for liquid, was a, <laughs> liquid crack, liquid crack. Yeah, has anybody heard of Cisco? You know what I'm talking about, right? Not the singer, not the singer, absolutely not. <laughs> the, Maybe if they melted the singer in the bottle. <laughs> I think that's you, what I drank. Yeah, I think that's what you yeah. <laughs> So I immediately grabbed a big bottle, but mm. Freddie stopped me, you know, mm. and he's like, no, 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 no. You need the small bottle. You've never drank Cisco before. And I was like, listen, man, I want to forget about what's going on. I want Jesus. the big bottle. And sure enough, oh, I, I remember grabbing the big bottle. Next thing I knew, I woke up and did all those trunk. <laughs> the next day. <laughs> yeah. In Colgate. And it's, we're breaking, we're breaking sunlight, right? And uh, it's like six in the morning. And everybody's, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had this crazy headache from the Cisco. Uh, and it was uh, an eighty-eight must. Was it an eighty-eight? 
Mustang or it was, something. Well, it was, it it was, was a hatchback. It so was you a had hatchback. a hatchback. You had a hot ass window. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was pretty cramped. Yes. Yeah, with a lot of clothing. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and then uh, after that, I joined the military, just like Edgar joined yeah, the military. That's right. Oh boy! And, how far uh, did you? How far did you make it? I didn't make it too far because again, that injury came back, uh, and uh, yes, which yes. now I have tendonitis in the shoulder because of that. Uh, and then that's when I started working as a desktop publisher. And then, uh, <laughs> desktop uh, making publisher. millions, millions, <laughs> making millions in Dominican pesos. <laughs> <laughs> millions in Dominican pesos, which is like, what, $14? About so, about so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, you know, again, that's that's how the whole story started. I started, uh, you know, taking classes and I fell in love with it, but there was a lack of structure. And yeah. then uh, I said, like, there's got to be something better. And that's when I uh, ended up opening up the school. And well, I started off in Hoboken for, mm-hmm. for a couple of years first, which is uh, Planet Hoboken. From there, we went to the Boys Club. And from the Boys Club, we went one year at the uh, Monroe Center. Right. If you guys remember the Monroe Center, yeah. it's still yep. there. And then from the Monroe Center, I'm, I'm 11 years later now in the Heights. And then, uh, as you were saying... Still um, in the same place, 87 Same Franklin. place, yeah. 11 years, going to be 12 years uh, in September. Nice. And, uh, you know, I've been blessed. I've danced off Broadway for nice. four years uh, you've been to great. egypt i think to dance yeah. if i saw um, the i've traveled and yeah. performed in over 33 countries that's crazy um, and i and i've been very blessed because as you guys know uh listening in uh if you're not watching the podcast i'm six <laughs> feet tall and i weigh stand up stand up yeah, show yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Show <laughs> them. <laughs> that's right this is Good an imposing Lord. individual Woo-hoo. that's right yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, I'm not the uh, petite. <laughs> that you never are. really were. You never no, really no, were. No, no, no. I never really were. Thanks, Omar. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so much for the positive. I wanted to be your friend, man. Yeah. <laughs> so much for the positive reinforcement, right? Now you never, you never answered the question. Have you ever seen embarrassing uh, moments or, or stage fright? I mean, there, there's always been embarrassing or, moments, only because in the world of dance, it's 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 very much like improv. You right, know, right, right, right. What you make stage. of it? Yeah. Oh my, my shoe buckle came off. So now I have to kill two minutes to help that out. Or uh, there's a wardrobe <laughs> malfunction. And people, people don't understand. I love wardrobe when, when malfunctions. When you have to improvise. <laughs> and it's on a woman. Oh, right? uh, yeah. yeah. Especially Janet Jackson. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm but, old. I'm old. Yeah. Um, but that's the hardest part, you know, improvising on the spot. And I who mean, does it better, man? I mean... <laughs> if there's anybody that makes the best out of any situation, exactly. all right? I mean, you turn it around. Yeah. I was watching a video. I was telling you earlier about, I think it was a birthday video because it was some cake it on was, your face, it, yeah. right? Or something, yeah, right? Okay. A, yeah, and yeah. you must have danced off. I, I stopped counting like after 14 girls. There, there, and there and let me tell you. dozen girls. Yeah. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> yeah, but again, you know... It, it, it's it's a birthday tradition, and some of them kind of missed the step, but you would kind of make yeah, the best listen, of it, and you know, kind of turned it, it around it and it kept is. it going. It's a people tradition. laughed. It was <laughs> you turned on my face, you know. Uh, it, it's just a birthday tradition, uh, you know. Usually, when it's one of the fellow Salceros or Salceros' birthday, we make a nice big circle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, <laughs> I haven't heard that in a minute. I'm old. Yeah. I'm old. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we create a nice circle. We dance around them just to you know celebrate their day instead of buying gifts. Nice. That can get a little expensive. Yeah, no, we that's just, awesome. You just create a nice little yeah. dance around the person, and that's something you never forget. I no, mean, absolutely you, not. Uh, sometimes a gift you know you put aside, or sometimes you re-gift it. You know? <laughs> uh, but a dance, you know, when, when you create a circle like that, that's that's memorable. That that's that's retention. That, that's something true. you never uh, you forget. It, it's nice. a personal moment. Yeah. Nice. Uh, but this year, I will be uh, traveling to Italy, Croatia, nice um, Spain. Nice. Uh, and I am now hosting six congresses and festivals around the world. Um, so I'm blessed, man. I'm, I'm very grateful to be doing that. That yeah. was my next question. How often do you travel? Uh, a lot. Uh, next month in April, I will be teaching at the University of Arizona. Uh, I'll be teaching lectures and, uh, and just uh, teaching uh, and just getting to know the kids because they have a phenomenal dance program in Arizona at, at the university. So I'll be there for a week. Um, I, I also MC and host uh, the Charlotte Salsa and Bachata Festival, uh, nice. the New York International Salsa Congress, which is happening Labor Day. Pay weekend. attention, folks. Write all this down. Yeah. I don't know if people <laughs> write things down anymore, but still. Yeah. <laughs> At the uh, Marriott Grand Marquis, where uh, On Your Feet is being uh, played right now. Okay. Uh, Memorial Day weekend, I'll be hosting the uh, Connecticut Salsa Festival, which is awesome as well because a major proceeds of that goes to the uh, St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, which is Beautiful. awesome. Yeah, so it really helps out the kids with uh, cancer and, and uh, 
That's uh, awesome. Yeah, it it just it's it's personal, you know. Yes. Yep. Um, and I also uh, do the Philadelphia Salsa Festival. So you're all over the place. I'm all man. over the wow. place, man. You should try doing uh, Make a Wish too. Uh, well, that's part of the whole. Uh, Is it? You know, yeah, okay. that's part of it. Yeah. Uh, now let me ask you this, because you you travel, you you're you're around, you're doing all these charitable events. Um, what's the majority of the people that turn out? Oh, we're man. talking Hispanic. Mm-hmm. Why? I'm looking for a demographic. Obviously. A lot of Hispanic people come out, right? Well, you know, here here's the uh, here's the crazy because I've been I've been to one of your events and I've seen Chinese people yeah, suddenly man. dance yeah, salsa yeah, yeah, yeah. like I've never seen before. Yeah, very true. Which is which is impressive when you talk about you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, here, here's the thing. Uh, Congress is huge. That's just massive. Mm. But when you have a festival, it's a little bit smaller. It's more right. intimate. Okay. Um, but believe it or not, the demographics. Uh, the Latinos, we, the right. Latinos, you know, you're, you're, what's your ethnic background? Puerto Rican? Puerto Rican, Dominican, and a little Lebanese. And Edgar is Mexico. Mexican, sure. and Joey is Croatia. Croatian, Croatian, you see? So, um, <laughs> the demographics, believe it or not, at these now salsa events, unlike back in the days, yeah. uh, are very diverse. And I remember going to my first dance social in New York City, and it was at uh, Jimmy Anton's dance social at Dance Manhattan many, many years ago no longer there um we the latinos were the minority yes and i'm looking around and i'm like what the f- <laughs> what's going on here <laughs> Yo, what the there's f- a disparity and, in the yeah, numbers here like, and, and me being the the normal natural stereotypical latino like right, right. yo where my people at bro <laughs> like, we run deep yeah it's like why is this china dancing better than us it's not supposed to work out like that and i'll tell you why after so many years psychologically thinking about this and dissecting why um us latinos and 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 anybody out there listening latino people please don't take this personal but after almost 20 years of research yes um we are very ignorant to our own culture because we think just because we are latino or latina that we automatically know how to dance. And that's not so much the case. (laughs) No, absolutely not. I'm a proponent of that. (laughs) You see what I'm saying? I am Latino and Latina, (laughs) and I do not know how to dance. Yeah, it's like to say, just because I'm a good, you know, just because I have my license doesn't mean I'm a good driver. Right. You know know what I'm saying, right? Yes. Yes. And what happens is a lot, and let me tell you. Now you want a nipple for that? Wow. (laughs) Wow. All right, in other words, I'm babysitting. Thank you. He just finished doing a shot, man. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> but basically what happens is, and, and you know, we, we have a software system and, and basically we know who's coming in uh, ethnicity wise. And we get more non-Hispanics because we noticed that the Hispanics who come in to take class are the first ones to become emotional and get frustrated mm-hmm. because this is not what I learned. Right. No, it's, it's like not what saying, you've two stepped. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's like <laughs> saying, you know, it's always easier to work on a blank canvas than right. a canvas that's been oh, created. Oh, I see. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I see, so, what, yeah. you, I see what you did there. White, yeah. blank canvas. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> I see, there you go. Also, there I you see go. what you did there. I like that, though. I like that. <laughs> wow. No, I'm uh, no, I get it, though. I get it. And, and, and believe it or not, and I love my Hispanics, you know, Latino, man. I feel you, man. Uh, I'm Cuban. I feel your pain. I feel yeah, your pain. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, but we get frustrated first because yeah. we already have this mentality that it's got to be like this mm-hmm. because this is what, and look, I, I agree. Because when I learned, my mom taught me in the living room, you know, was, <laughs> I was, I was losing chocolate. <laughs> you know, from kicking You so were much. standing, you were standing on her feet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but you know, and I tell people there's a difference between, you know, classroom etiquette and then there's street etiquette. You know, there's yep. a street style and there's a classroom style. Yep. Not to say that one style is any smarter than the other or better, but they're two different styles. Absolutely. And once people come in to take my class and they realize the difference, like, oh, wow, this is different. I like mm-hmm. this. This is more structured. It's organized. Uh, and it's a physical language. It really mm-hmm. is. Once you start putting numbers to things and there's a solid foundation, then we can start creating on that foundation. But if there's a, if there's a fracture in that foundation, we're not going to grow anything, right? <laughs> and we're pretty much have that horse visor on, and yeah. it's got to be like this. And the minute we open up, and you know, we, we just create some some that's new aspects anything. of things. That's Absolutely, with anything, man. A Absolutely. lot of people are like this. Absolutely, yes. that's what. Anything. Like for example, for example, Italians make the best Italian food, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right? <clears throat> However, 
uh, one of my favorite Italian restaurants is Leo's Grande in Hoboken, yes. right? <laughs> <laughs> and they're Hindus. Well, they're talking about this. <laughs> No, <laughs> so, if you go in the kitchen, nobody has yeah. papers. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. Not one cook up in there. That's true. Is, yeah, yeah, that is very is true. And you Italian. see them. You see them from the sidewalk, right? The, yeah, like absolutely. their kitchen door is right yeah. on the sidewalk. Yeah, andale pues, dame spaghetti, andale chicho. That's my people right there. Dame la chicha, dame la salbondigas. Yes. <laughs> I never let boy, I'm like salsa. You know what I'm saying? Ya llegó Mario. Un orden grande, por favor. So you get what I'm saying, right? Of course. You man, have, of you, course. The yeah. only people that stick to their roots is I've never seen a Mexican doing some Chinese food. I'm just saying. <laughs> right? Well, that's true. It. That's true. That you go to a Chinese, anywhere you go to a Chinese restaurant, it's Chinese. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, it is. And yes, then you have true. to wonder why every winter you walk into a Chinese restaurant, they're cooking with some coke. Yeah. Right? Because they don't want us in there, you know. They don't want us causing problems. They're like, we need, get, we need to get these black people and Spanish people out this motherfucker right here. Right? That's why they're cooking with some coats on. They're like, fuck that. Don't put the heater on. Because when you put the heater on, they're not going to go out. Right? That's just to go. That's what's up. Right? Amen, baby. We stick uh, around. We'll be right back. We're here with Mario B. Gonzalez. That's what's up. Salsa Fever on 2. MidnightOJ.com. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for part two of this Midnight OJ podcast. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Midnight OJ podcast. Visit our website at www.midnightoj.com. Hit us up on Twitter, Midnight underscore OJ. And in the infamous words of Kaiser Willem, give me a woman who loves beer and I shall conquer the world. Until next time. It's nice.